Everything we've ever been, we still have within us, accumulating. So let me explain. We're very old, maybe four billion years old. And at the very beginning of our existence, we would have been nearly nothing. We started from practically nothing. And, um, you know, you can look at our evolution when the first complicated cell occurred, when we learned to live with other cells. So we still have this in us today. When a cell lives inside another cell and they help each other out, it's symbiotic. This was an early stage of evolution and obviously led to more complicated beings in which we could inhabit and live a life and experience. So this was way back when the world was covered in water and one of the first recognizable beings we would have been is a plant. And just as we still have the reptilian brain within our own brain or lower down in the brain stem is the reptilian brain and then we've evolved an extra brain, so too is our plant still within us. And this is the hormonal system, also called the endocrine system. It consists of hormonal organs, starting from the bottom, the men's testes, then the women's ovaries. Now we share these because we have a soulmate. You can use your soulmate's ovaries or your soulmate's testes. They are kind of yours as your connection to your soulmate too. Then there's the pancreas. Then there's the adrenaline glands and the void in the middle of them. And then there's the thymus in the chest, the thyroid in the throat, and then the pineal gland connected to the hypothalamus <laughs> and the pituitary gland. So this is an important part of our body that we completely pretty much ignore as a system, as a whole system, because doctors will go in and cut bits out, ruining it even more. And it's your inner plant which God communicates to. It's the most fundamental part of your being, the most important part. If that starts wilting, you wilt. If that's thriving, you thrive. So. We should all concentrate on our inner plant and making sure it thrives. Recently, I, when I came to this sort of conclusion that it's, that it's most like a plant, or a flower even, if you like, when I was putting my head up to the strong sun and just feeling it on my forehead, feels fantastic. It's like the... <laughs> The plant really is still within us and still acts like a plant. It's quite amazing. I could probably talk about it for hours. Um, if you look at it as a plant and you combine it with the knowledge of the chakras from Indian uh, stuff, um, it sort of fits. Well, it does fit. I mean, you've got the the testes, which are the absolute lowest part of the root. This is your grounding, you know, if there's a problem with that, there's a problem with the tips of your root, you're not going to function as a flower. Uh, the next one up, uh, the sacral chakra, this is the woman's ovaries. This is known as to be your waters, you know, how are your waters? In a real plant, this, you know, this area would need 25% water. That's what you should have in the soil. 
and the next one up is uh, the pancreas and it could be described as like a, a tubular in the roots you know a bit which stores all the all the stuff that it needs and this is very much like our pancreas in our body producing and providing enzymes now the next one you get to would be the, adren the adrenal glands which are either side of like a void and then that void is your core your soul and this part of the plant would be where the ground meets the air the the point there the very point where it in the middle below it is underground above is above ground and so this is a very important part of the plant you know see if anything happened to that it would be a dead plant and that's kind of our core now we go up one level higher now we're going above ground so we've obviously got leaves and the next one up would be your thymus um, now I don't really know what the the leaf is doing maybe I'll come up with a a better version of this but um, still very important um, and again then the thyroid another important organ I won't go into all their functions but they're all extremely important for us to function and then we get to the top one the flower the pineal gland which is connected to the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland the pituitary gland is about the size of a pea yet it governs your whole body recently I've had experience in meditation where I could really feel that pituitary gland I felt like I had control over my whole body that I never felt before it didn't it lasted a couple of minutes and I've yet to experience it again can't sort of force it, it just kind of has to happen but I've had that glimpse of um, what it feels like it feels fantastic and I'm only just just at the beginning of this connecting this together my chakras sort of working as a whole and you know whereas I'd say I've probably damaged my plant over the years through external factors through beliefs that I've held that are wrong and all sorts of things and um, now I'm just starting to get it working so I'm going to say watch this space and uh, there's going to be some good stuff coming so there we go when we listen into God we listen with our inner plant and um, when I've spoken before well I haven't really spoken about it but I've said before about we go through the seasons and there's a you know, different thing for each season and it seems to go love in winter uh, grow in spring no, sorry, learn in spring, grow in summer, play in autumn. And this is to do with our inner plant. You know, so we learn stuff in spring, okay, and then in summer when there's lots of sun, it grows, and then we play, and then we love, and then we <laughs> learn again. <laughs> sorry, it's a bit rubbish. But anyway, it's all good stuff. Okay, bye.